Hi guys, welcome. Uh, welcome to the first CNI track. Uh, hey. Um, and uh, we'll start off with uh, Ray Pike from the Linux Foundation. Thank you. Can people hear me okay? Like, so, cool. Uh, yeah, I also want to extend my thanks. Thanks for coming. Uh, it's a bit, bit of a bit of a risk, like doing a session right after lunch on, on day two, but it's good to see a group of people here. Uh, I mean, obviously have like, the slides. I'm, I'm Ray Peck again from the Linux Foundation, and I've been involved in one of our networking projects called OPNFE. I'll give a brief overview on the project in a minute. Uh, I wanted to talk about like interoperability testing uh, along with, I mean, we've been working with OCP community for a while uh, for the networking industry. Uh, so I'll give you a brief overview of the project, uh, the work we've done with, with OCP. And if you come to our booth in the last day and a half, we do have a solution brief that was just published that uh, talks a lot about uh, some of the items that, that I'll talk about. And uh, one of the things I'll also spend a decent amount of time on is we have an event twice a year called PluckFest. This is where a lot of the testing activities happen with our community members. And, uh, we welcome like OCP's resources and people that are participated in the event. Uh, so we'll talk about that and along with future collaborations. Obviously have a um, set of slides. Um, if you have any questions, please stop me. Like I won't be offended if I don't go through all of my deck. Uh, my goal is to uh, have discussions with people here and answer your questions. And if I only use up three of my slides, but you, you got your questions answered, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's my goal. Uh, so apologies if you've seen this multiple times like during this event. Uh, you probably saw this during the keynote where we announced a, part, uh, a, a partnership between OCP and, and Linux Foundation. Uh, I kind of like this slide because uh, it not only describes a networking stack, uh, but it also lists like key important initiatives, both in terms of standards and open source projects that are making the NFV journey possible. I mean, without those open source projects like Open Daylight, OpenStack, uh, OpenSwitch, and DPDK, uh, we would not be talking about NFV today. And what's also been exciting is, you know, outside of the software, even from the hardware standpoint, like, um, like projects like OCP and TIP have been very active in the past several years. And, uh, I, I think like Arpit noted, I mean, the virtualization journey had started in the data center probably a couple of decades ago. Uh, for various reasons in the networking industry, it's got a bit of a late start. Uh, but I think these components are what makes that journey possible. Uh, and as, as I noted, I'll talk about the OPNFE project. You see sort of the sidebar that's going across. Uh, ours is not a typical like a software development open source project. Like you think of like Open Daylight and OpenStack, I mean, they basically doing a lot of software development. Ours is more focused on integration. Uh, I mean, I'm sure I don't have to explain the term NFE uh, to, to the folks here. I mean, I would, the other thing I was surprised at, this is my second OCP summit. My first one was last year. And the amount of discussion on networking has dramatically increased in over a year. Uh, I mean, a lot of the keynote yesterday I sat through, uh, maybe with the exception of one, like throughout, through all of the presentations, they all talk, talked about networking and telco in some fashion. So I was, I was very impressed. And uh, I mean, I think last year when, I had a, when we had a booth, I, I, for some people I had to explain what an NFV was, but I definitely didn't have to do that this week. So I've been very impressed. Um, so the way OPNFE started, uh, it started, the discussion started probably like six, seven years ago in, in a standard organizations like Etsy. And one of the things a lot of people noticed was that a lot of the ingredients were already there in open source. Things like uh, OpenStack for cloud resource management. Uh, in SCN controllers, you had multiple things like Onos, uh, OpenContrail, and, and OpenDaylight, and like a lot of the data plane projects that were already happening. But what was lacking uh, was an effort uh, in an open source environment to integrate all these components and put them all together. Uh, and that's how OPNFE started. Uh, I'll give you a quick overview on, on the project in a minute. But uh, so, we, so this diagram on the, all the way on, the le on, on your left, uh, this list for our last uh, Euphrates release, all the upstream components that we've integrated. Uh, so I mean, for compute, like we got KVM, LXD, uh, storage, Ceph, 
uh, and the controllers that I, I talked about already, and like a several data plane acceleration projects. So these are all uh, been integrated into our, uh, our last Euphrates release. Uh, and the, on the right hand side, the diagram in the middle sort of talks about the types of projects that we have in OPNFE. So integration is, is an obvious one. Uh, and also we have a lot of testing projects that, I, that I'll, I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, so making sure that things actually work. Uh, uh, and all, all the way on the right hand side of the middle diagram, uh, what we, we also have a lot of what we call feature projects. And if you come to our booth, uh, there's a demo uh, that's uh, being run by our community member, Tomi, from Nokia. Uh, so he's representing the doctor project. And I think in our, so in our demo right now, he's talking about like basically how you deal with the maintenance scenario, uh, what doctor uh, project allows you to do. And one of the cool demos we did at OpenSec I mean, a couple of years ago in Barcelona was like a fault detection. Uh, I mean, fault detection capability in, in OpenStack wasn't quite telco ready. Uh, so, I mean, Heather, like, is sitting up front here. She was involved in the keynote demo as well. We're cutting cables, and we, the calls were still going through with the, with the doctor feature enabled. So uh, we work with, directly with a lot of the upstream communities to make sure that uh, things are... Uh, things have like a telco, telco grade features uh, that are needed uh, in, in communities like Open Daylight and OpenStack. And I won't spend too much time all the way on the right. Uh, it talks about a new initiative that we, we embarked on called Cross CI. Because uh, when we started, what we're basically doing was we're integrating release versions of upstream projects from like OpenStack and Open Daylight. Uh, but we're taking this even further. We want to hit the tip of the master, if you will, and then pull out the latest and greatest uh, software drop, even if it's not released. So we wanted to integrate and test them quicker, even before it's released, and detect if there are any issues or like bugs, and report them to the upstream community a lot quicker, rather than waiting six months for the next OpenStack release, as an example. Uh, so there's actually, I mean, I think Arpit also talked about the Open Networking Summit event in LA next week. Like before the ONS event starts, uh, all the community members that are listed there are going to get together and have a cross-community CI workshop. Uh, so that's an a exciting development that's happening, and you'll probably, hopefully, you'll hear more about that soon. Uh, so quick intro on our project. Uh, so we launched a little over, uh, about two, uh, three and a half years ago. Uh, we do two releases per year. Uh, so we've gone through five releases. Our next release is coming up uh, in about a month. And all of our releases are named after a river. Uh, we go through different geographic areas. We started with Arno in Europe, uh, Brahmaputra, Colorado, Danube, Euphrates, and next one is Fraser. There's a river, I believe, in, in British Columbia. Um, and the number of projects, I mean, that probably needs to be updated. We just approved a new project uh, a couple of weeks ago called CRAN. So, so the, the project's been hovering above 50 for the last couple of years. And all the way to the right, I uh, just wanted to see, uh, show you, uh, give you a glimpse of our community. I mean, these are all the uh, organizations that have been contributing code to OPNFE in the last uh, three and a half years. And what's interesting about OPNFE was that when we launched, we didn't have any seed code. Uh, a lot of projects like OpenStack and Open Daylight started with the seed code that was contributed, contributed, contributed by key member companies. Uh, when we started our project, we had n absolutely nothing in our repo. Uh, and over the years, obviously, uh, lot, like, you know, like I said, we have 50 plus projects today and a lot of codes that have been being contributed. And what's been interesting is that more than 50% of the code are coming from more than five or six companies. Uh, so it gives a good balance. It's not necessarily dominated by one or two key players. Uh, and we've been main, main thing, uh, we've been maintaining a good balance over the three and a half years and uh, been very, very happy with, with the health, healthy community that we have. Uh, so testing, uh, I mean, I talked about testing a couple of slides ago. Uh, we have, I don't know the exact number, probably anywhere between six to eight testing projects within OPNFE, and they address different areas uh, of the stack. Uh, like, I mean, Funk Test stands for functional testing. I mean, making sure things actually work. Uh, we also have testing for like a storage performance uh, in a virtualized environment, uh, vSwitch performance testing, uh, bottlenecks testing, et cetera, et cetera. 
And obviously, when th these things started, like they were working in basically silos. These different testing projects weren't necessarily talking to each other. Uh, so a good example of that is that you know, when you, when you build an OPNFE environment and people ran different tests, they were displaying their test results in a separate environment. Like somebody was using Grafana, uh, something, somebody else was using Kibana as an example, and there was a third project that was using Drupal. Uh, and, and the community members realized that we need to standardize this to make this easy for developers and users to interpret the test results. So we, at the bottom, we have a URL, uh, testresults.opnfe.org. And you should be able to see like a test results of various deployments that happens uh, multiple times a day. Uh, so a lot of good coordination happening. And the other project I wanted to point out is a project called Dovetail. Uh, and I'll just jump to the next slide. Uh, so a couple of months ago, after probably two and a half years of work in the community, we finally launched a, a certification and compliance program called OPNFE Verified. And Dovetail is a project that has putting together the test suite for, for this OPNFE Verify program. Uh, so obviously the Dovetail team is leaning on a lot of the other testing projects in OPNFE like Functest and Yardstick, and also like borrowing a lot of the test suites from upstream communities like OpenStack and OpenDaylight as well. So, I mean, obvious benefits to this program for service providers is that, I mean, this gives you a, you know, hopefully it gives them a confidence that when they see a solution with this logo that it passes a baseline framework for NFE infrastructure solution. Uh, and for us in the community and also the vendors, uh, as you see more products with this logo, uh, you know, it'll demonstrate the readiness and availability of the commercial products that's based on OPNFE. Uh, so it took a tremendous amount of work, uh, like I said, like a two and a half years, uh, a lot of project uh, uh, community team members. And, and the other thing we, we did for the launch, I mean, when we had the portal ready, when we had the test suites ready, uh, we could have just launched a program, like here it is, go have at it. But what we wanted to do was that when we come out of the gate, we wanted to have a number of products that are already been certified, have gone through the ringers, if you will. Uh, so when we launched a program, like the four products from ZTE, Huawei, Nokia, and Wind River, I didn't forget anyone, uh, they all uh, came out with the OPNFE Verify logo on their product. Uh, so, so it shows a lot of momentum so out of the gate. Um, and we'll probably do like a couple of updates a year. That's sort of the goal. I mean, we just co completed our first one. Uh, probably in the second half of the year, you'll probably see an updated logo. So the 2018.01 obviously is, is the timestamp, right? The, the January of 2018. Uh, so you'll see another logo in, in second half of the year. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to point out, uh, a couple of other things. So you can, the test suite is there, so you can download it and run it yourself. Or, I mean, potentially you can work with a third-party provider if you don't have a lab infrastructure to do this uh, on your behalf. Uh, and if you're familiar with in the telco industry, a lot of the, a lot of the certification programs, I'm, a lot of them like provide specs, right? You can, you can sort of look up the spec and find out what, what, uh, what tests are being done. But very rarely you're going to be able to see like under the hood, if you will. So we have all the source code, everything's in our repo that's public. Uh, so it's very transparent. Like you know exactly what tests are being run, how the code is written. Uh, and you can even provide, you know, suggestions and comments on how to improve them. So it's all, you know, op true open source fashion. It's, it's been very transparent. Uh, so if uh, you see the overview page there, uh, you should have a lot of the information that you're looking for. But if you have any further questions, please, please stop me after the talk. Uh, so. The other thing I kind of glossed over, like if you see the bottom of the stack, we, we talk about the, our lab infrastructure, so that's what I wanted to cover next. Um, so one of the things that we learned very early on in the project was that, because I think when we started, like we, we, we thought maybe we can do this like in a virtual environment. We get some racks from the rack space or like even Amazon Cloud and do our deployment, development, and testing work in a virtual environment. And we quickly, quickly realized that that doesn't really work. We need actual bare metal hardware uh, to do real development and testing. Uh, so what we, what we did, uh, what the community members did is to launch a project called Pharos. 
Uh, and what this is is a community-driven uh, like, uh, lab resources that are available from around the world. Like in the Bay Area, Flex has a lab in, in Milpitas that community members are using. Huawei has lab resources, uh, Intel, uh, China Mobile, Orange, uh, Nokia, Ericsson, I'm sure I'm forgetting others, they, and Okinawa Open Labs in Japan. So they're providing, uh, without any cost to any of our community members, they're providing hardware resources to do, to do development, deployment, and testing work. Uh, and, uh, and just to give you a flavor, uh, I think one of the links should take you to a spec for what a Ferris, a Ferris uh, hardware should look like, but basically you need six servers uh, at a minimum, in addition to a couple of other equipments. Uh, one for jump pos, like control, control and compute nodes. Uh, so it's like a tremendous amount of resources that are being provided by the community. And, and also, I mean, Linux Foundation, we also host a lab up in Oregon. I mean, that's the only one that was sort of paid for out of the OPNFE budget, if you will. Everything else has been contributed by community members. One thing that's lacking, however, I, I sort of, uh, this is where, as a software guy, I'm begging for hardware resources. Um, we don't have any Pharos lab with OCP servers. We've had conversations with a couple of vendors, uh, and they were exploring pop opportunities of providing hardware resources as another Pharos lab. And obviously, this requires staff time in addition to hardware resources. So it's not as easy as just agreeing to, I mean, provide a lab. Uh, so I understand that there are a lot of resource requirements that are needed, but it would be great to have a, a yet another lab. Uh, equipment like a completely OCP compliant like servers and, and hardware. Uh, so if you know of anyone who might be interested, I mean, please come talk to me after the talk. But I mean, we've had opportunities to work with the OCP community a couple of times a year. Uh, but it would be nice to have a OCP based server like available full time. Uh, so that's a little one of my requests. And the other one, if you're coming to ONS next week, we'll probably talk, I don't want to steal too much of the thunder because there's going to be a talk devoted to lab as a service. Uh, so this is another like infrastructure that OPNFE built uh, towards the end of last year. Uh, so we bought like a 52 servers, a mix of Intel and ARM architecture servers. Uh, and the goal of this is that, because we realized the Pharos footprint is like really large. I mean, no one's going to have like a lot of resources to, or a lot of, a lot of resources or have the opportunity to get access to the Pharos, Pharos lab hardware. So we wanted to make something that's more friendly for a wider audience. Like, I mean, you don't need to deploy to like six, six servers as an example. You can do a virtual deployment on a single blade. And maybe all you want to do is just deploy a VNF application on top of it and see if it works, right? So you don't need to build an OPNFE scenario from scratch. That's already done for you. And then you can reserve these like blades uh, like a few weeks at a time. I think the default is like we, we're following the library book model. Like you can, you can check something out for three weeks and then you can request like a couple of extensions. So this is not something to be used on a permanent basis, just a month or two at most. Uh, so this is sort of another hardware resources that, that we're, we're beginning to roll out. We're sort of at an early alpha phase is what I, how I would term it. Uh, but you can look at the wiki page and lab as labs.opnfe.org. As, as long as you have an LFID, you should be able to check out a blade and use it for a few weeks if you want to. Uh, so that's open. Uh, and then I think there's a talk like next Thursday at ONS uh, with a couple of developers that have been working on this. Uh, so more to come. Uh, and so, so like I noted, we have a mix of Intel and ARM-based hardwares, but none of the none of those are OCP-based hardware yet. So if that's something of interest in terms of, of of contribution to the lab as a service infrastructure. I'm sure uh, we definitely be interested in making sure that's that's something that people can use. Uh, so uh, I want to make sure how so ten minutes left. Uh, so PluckFest, so this is, uh, as I noted at, in the, earlier in the talk, we have this event a couple of times a year. Uh, following each of our releases, all the developer communities get together with, with others, like from service providers and even non-regular members of OPNFE. This is an opportunity for, for uh, technical people to get together and basically kick the tires on our latest release uh, to actually deploy and test them on different sets of hardware. 
so we had a combination at each of our Pluckfests. We had combination of hardware that were either on site or whoever is hosting the event, or we also had a lot of remote hardware uh, available as well that people can use. Uh, for example, like NEC had a lab with about like a 12 servers in Japan. Uh, they weren't necessarily like a Pharos compliant hardware, but that was like something that people can use remotely to deploy and, and debug like OPNFE uh, releases. Uh, and we've also had VNF vendors come by and then once OPNFE is deployed, like a deploy VNF on top of it and make sure that it works and functioning as expected. Uh, this is a public event. It's not just limited to OPNFE or LFN members. Uh, and you can see a little history of events that we've had in the past. We've had four so far, like we didn't have a Pluckfest after our first release, but uh, a lot of our member organizations like Cable Labs, uh, Intel, and others have been generous enough to host our event uh, featuring, uh, I mean, last event we had, uh, I believe, like 110 developers show up uh, and and also go through the history of what we've done in the past. I mean, you'll see the number of people like increasing. I think our first Pluckfest in Colorado, we had like 48 people. And then, I mean, basically two years later, it more than doubled. Uh, we have, uh, you know, a lot of developers show up, uh, a lot of new community members show up, and then, you know, deployment and testing. It seems like pretty trivial, but at our first Pluckfest, as an example, in, in after Brahmaputra, Deployment and going through the full suite of testing of OPNFE actually took four hours. So it wasn't a, a, a trivial task. So like if you imagine like a, there is a pod from Huawei as an example, they can do deployment and testing only twice a day, right? So you can't do this like go through uh, more than a couple of cycles. I mean, we've made lots of improvements since then, so the cycle time's gotten shorter. Uh, but one of the things I learned, uh, I mean, I'm, I, one of my role is a community manager, but one of the things I didn't appreciate amongst a lot of the project leads was that, like, installer PTLs didn't really appreciate what was happening in the funk test suite. Like, for them, it was like a black box. They, the things get deployed and then do some functional tests, and they didn't know what was going on in the background. Uh, so even, I mean, so, so I came through an appreciation that people were like working in silos. This was a good opportunity for people to get together and see what each other are doing. And this is also a good opportunity to find bugs. As we're deploying like OPNFE on a different hardware, we do find bugs and then the bugs get worked on even this, during the same week. And if you run into any issues as you're deploying OPNFE, a lot of the project leads are there because they're all attending. Like they had, if they have questions about funk tests or yardstick, uh, project as an example, you can sort of pull the PTLs and is what I'm seeing right or is this a bug? Uh, and so it's a good way to, uh, you know, debug issues and work through some of the deployment challenges that we have. Um, so moving towards the Colorado Pluckfest that we had at UNH, this is the first time when we had the OCP hardware show up. Uh, so both Lenovo and OCP brought their OCP hardware uh, to the event, and I was just mentioning this earlier to Heather and Brandon, was, I mean, I felt badly, so there were three vendors that brought their hardware, and one of them was non-OCP, and that server was like pretty quiet, like people were queued up behind like Lenovo and, and Nokia, because that was like a shiny, shiny object. Uh, so open source uh, software developers wanted to, you know, deploy OPNFE, deploy op open, open source solution on a, open hardware. So there was a lot of excitement uh, for both like Lenovo and Nokia folks. <laughs> and uh, it, I mean, Tommy's not here, but one of the things I've heard from Nokia folks, folks was that uh, they not only learned a lot about OPNFE as they're doing, doing deployment and testing, they were also able to debug their hardware, like things like firmware, their issues. Uh, so, um, you know, Nokia, since the Colorado Pluckfest, they've been sending their hardware to all of our Pluckfests, and I mean, they told me that they've been getting their money's worth with all the customs and shipping issues they had to deal with. Uh, so they've been able to debug their hardware, and, you know, it's been very valuable exercise for them. Um, so let me go through things a little quickly, so I don't want to run out of time. Um, so in the Daniel Pluckfest, this was hosted at Orange, just outside of Paris. This is when an edge server showed up. Uh, so one of the ODMs in Taiwan got, brought a, a nice form factor edge server about this big uh, that was just sitting on the shelf. 
so we're doing like a multi-site multi -site edge testing. Uh, it wasn't an OCP compliant hardware uh, technically, but uh, I mean, there's obviously a lot of interest in edge. I, I assume there are a lot of discussions about like edge use cases and devices even at this conference. Uh, so this is where the first edge devices showed up and, and I know a lot of the OCP vendors are, are working on edge devices as well. So we'd love to see that at our upcoming Plockfest. Uh, let's see. And the only other point I'll, I'll make about the Euphrates Pluck Fest, so I wanted to talk about the progress we made in terms of deployment and testing, because I think I mentioned at our first Pluck Fest, the entire cycle took four hours. Now that's now down to approximately two hours. So the, the people, uh, the community members, they put a lot of work into streamlining both testing and deployment. Uh, so the cycle time's gotten down to like two. Uh, so you can go through, it's like if you bring a hardware, uh, you're not just doing like two exercises per day. It's basically more like four or five. Uh, cool. And wanted to give a plug for the upcoming plug fest. It's going to be in the first full week of June. Uh, it, uh, if you've been to the Etsy campus, I've never been there, but it's going to be at Sofia in Tipolis, France. Because uh, you may have already noticed, like Etsy has their own pluck tests. They call them pluck tests. They're, they have their pluck fest like events uh, a couple of times a year. Um, and I thought it makes sense for us to continue our collaboration and co-locate. Uh, and the Etsy's events like two weeks. So they'll start the week prior, the last week of May, and we'll just co-locate with them on the, on the second week. Uh, you see the events wiki page, and I should be able to uh, broadcast the registration site. I believe that's up and running now. Uh, so obviously the goal is to uh, test the latest and greatest Fraser release that's coming out next month. And we're also working, the community members are also working on contributing new test cases to Etsy for their event. So we'd like to uh, try that out. Uh, and the request that I want to make to the OCP community is that Obviously, starting in late 2016, we had OCP servers available at our Pluckfest events. Uh, the, the type of hardware that we haven't been able to use uh, from OCP community is like a networking uh, equipment, like switches and, and others. So we, we like to sort of round out the server equipments we have with other OCP gears. Uh, so if you're interested, please let me know. And then equipments, you don't necessarily need to ship it to France, like I noticed earlier. Like I noted earlier, uh, we can also work with like a remotely hosted hardware as well. Like if you want to have the hardware here in, in San Jose, for example, as long as you give participants access to it, that's something that we can we can work with. Uh, let's see, how am I doing on time? Uh, so if you look at the solution brief on one of the things that we'll, you'll see, the, the work we did with the OCP community was that, I mean, Brandon's here, he sort of spearheaded this effort. I mean, he did spearhead this effort last year. Uh, we to put together a virtual central office demo uh, for our summit in Beijing in, in June of last year. Uh, one of the key points I wanted to point out, we obviously had like an OCP hardware that was uh, prominently featured on our, on our stage. Uh, this is a solution that was put together in three weeks uh, with, with about 10 companies and about 20 community members. Uh, and obviously this is a demo, this is not a production environment by any means, but uh, if you talk to like a lot of the carriers, uh, putting up a physical central office solution takes six to eight months. And we're able to do this like in the combination of open source software and, and, and commercial software, we're able to do this in three weeks. Uh, and things actually work. I mean, the other thing I was personally concerned about was that in China, you had to go through the Great Firewall. But even with that, like everything worked out really well. We had obviously server infrastructure in, in China and also in like Raleigh, North Carolina, and the demo went without a hitch. Uh, so, and then we're trying, we're starting, Brandon's already working on um, VCO demo 2.0, we're calling it addressing like a mobile use cases and we're talking to a number of different vendors about uh, you know featuring a lot of the OCP hardware and labs uh, so that's sort of where we're at I'm sorry I'm out of time like want to make sure I can answer at least one or two questions but. so if anybody has a question um, did I put everybody to sleep no <laughs> 
Uh, you guys are more than welcome to. Yeah, I'll be I'll be around, and then if you want to find me, just either outside or I'll I'll be at the Linux Foundation networking booth that's near the stage. Like, feel please feel free to come grab me. So. Thank you. Thank you.